I'd call it kind of a, a, a life embracing pessimism. It, you know, it would be eco pessimism um, in that it's it's not something that's kind of um, all oh, life's always going to involve suffering, life's and deaths at the end. So I'm not gonna. So I'm going to be quite mopey sort of thing. Um, I, I'd say it's a, it's a much more kind of yay, we're all going to suffer, now let's just do it anyway, um, sort of a, <laughs> approach. Um, but um, but in terms of like, you know, uh, there's a level to which eco-pessimism would include the the idea that, you know, we cannot necessarily con- control everything that's going on. We can't, um, you know, there is going to be a huge amount of death. There is, that, that's, that, as these processes kind of play out, the, you know, the uh, runaway global warming will very likely include the extinction of what, um, we know as humanity today, whether or not that means like all humans or whatever, um, is another thing. Um, in terms of the level to which there, there there actually exists this entity that we call humanity, or but that's a slightly different thing. Um, but it, I have a you know a belief, uh, you know a, a kind of a an informed guest guesstimate that you know we will see within this mass extinction event something that amounts to um, something similar to the uh, the Permian, Permian extinction event, um, which is a level to which that, you know, which is very instinctual. So, I, you know, you, you read studies, you read articles and whatnot. And then, then for me, it's, you know, which some people might go, you know, this is, this is just your own kind of uh, imagination, which is, you know, true to a degree. Um, but it's an instinctual thing about the level to which, you know, scientists are conservative by nature um, you know, they will make the kind of the least drastic guess and, you know, which all kind of estimates are, you know, it's mm-hmm. just guesswork. Mm-hmm. And in terms of talking about the, the scale of the impact of this, I, you know, most of the worst predictions I would say are kind of probably just towing the, just, just dipping their toes into the, the scale of this entire process. So that's one, one side of it, but I don't think that that needs to be a, a defeatist thing. In fact, I think it's quite the opposite. I think, in, if anything, that should kind of, if there was, um, if it was the case that, you know, we're going to say it's only going to be this this much and you go, well, that's, you might say, well, that's optimistic, that, that, that's much good, but that's quite, the level of engagement that that requires is much less than anything. I think that the worse things are, the the more that makes me want to do stuff, the more that makes me, me so, you know, um, I am, so in terms of like, you know, um, we might both have kind of a bit of um, uncomfortability with some level of what we call activism um, in terms of what activism can mean. Um, in terms of any level of activist practice that I have, most of that is as a hunt saboteur. Um, uh, and what that really means is that I um, I will smash badger traps, which is you know, on the grand scale of things, like you know, really quite meaningless. You go, that's absurd. It's not going to stop global warming. It's not going to, um, you know, it's not going to stop mass extinction, but the more I read about mass extinction, the more and you know and the impact this commentary is having, the more I want to go and smash a trap and make sure that that trap didn't kill a badger. And I I think it's better to assume the absolute worst in that way and get you know and be as motivated as possible to do whatever you know tiny little absurd thing you can do. So, you know, to have any level of impact in, you know, wherever you live, that's, you know, I find the optimistic stance is much more disempowering in that way because it means you can have hope and faith in processes that are outside of your ability to do anything with. So I cannot, as an individual right now, sat in my, you know, in the study in my house, I can't affect the policymakers really. You know, my, my vote is, you know, you know, not meaningful in a way that I ascribe meaning to things, but my ability to go stamp on a, a trap is direct, and I have a level of relationship with that. Um, which, if I was more optimistic, I don't know that I, you know, I'd have that same motivation to do it. In all honesty, um, I don't know that if I believed that um, that this culture could collectively um, fix everything in the way that you know a lot of greens and people you know particularly of a leftist variety um will talk about i um if i believe that i I don't think i'd have any level of kind of desire to go out and do things on a personal level Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, no, I, I agree with that. I think something that I've uh, talked about is and talked about with others is like when you uh, when you kind of just take in the reality of what's happening and you accept that, yeah, human beings are facing an extinction event that'll include them in that process. Um, people will say that is disempowering. It makes you less likely to want to do something. You just want to kind of just, um, you know, numb yourself out and and just try to live life as normally as you can while everything is falling apart. And you're not going to want to, you know, engage with any sort of activism or anything like that. And what I say is like, that's absolutely happening anyway. You know, people are already completely disconnected from what's currently happening, whether they believe in it or not. Um, the question then I have to ask people is like, if this is the situation and this is the reality uh, of the situation that we're in right now, then we need to do things that, you know, we shouldn't be basing our, our actions on an outcome, you know, like this idea. So if Extinction Rebellion or just use them as an example, but any, any of these, like they might accept some of the notions of human extinction being on the table, but their idea is like, we can, st- we, if we do it in the right time frame, we can create the uh, systems or processes required to mitigate climate change and save humanity and save civilization. And that is based on yeah. this outcome, right? Like that we're going to win. This is optimistic, ultimately. But if we take on sort of that pessimistic view that you've explained to me uh, right now, that actually might inform better action and more informed action because you're not doing it based on this like false idea that we're going to win some sort of imaginary battle with this force called climate change or whatever. We're going to do things like you said, like you're subverting... Uh, sabotaging these these badger traps. People are like, well, what the hell does that matter? You just saved a couple badgers from being hunted today. And like, yes, but it's 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 so much more visceral and meaningful to you to engage in that kind of work than to be out in the streets demanding politicians do something, you know? I don't know. Yeah, time, history, and progress is the biggest uh, trap of them all, the biggest cage of them all, <laughs> that whole idea of you know, do it to get something out there. Do it something that's transcendental and visible out there that, you know, that we're going to reach eventually. 